Hey folks, welcome to Maverick Gun Works. I'm going to uh, give you a little overview of something we don't see a whole lot of. Is the uh, fairly new Caltech uh, uh, PMR30. It's a super lightweight gun that uh, shoots 22 Magnum rimfire cartridges. It's a cool little gun made in Florida. And, uh, here we have that gun. This was is is a uh, green version. They have a tan and a black, and uh, a flat dark earth. I guess it is what they call it. Anyway. Cool little gun. I've been surprised at how lightweight this is. There's a whole lot of plastic on it. It's a polymer uh, composite kind of thing. So uh, it is very lightweight. We're going to take it apart and show you a little bit about how it works. A couple, a couple of the uh, cool features about it. We have the uh, fiber optic sights on it. So you have the orange in the back. Gives you two dots in the back. In front, uh, we have with this one, from the factory arrives with a green one. And uh, something about that in the box that came with it, they also give you a couple of other choices. You have a red and a white uh, fiber optic that you can change out for your front sight. Gives you a little different uh, view if you wanted to do that. All right. Here we have an ambidextrous safety lever. All right, see there? Right-handed or left-handed. Okay. Also with this firearm, see that's, that's your, your safety zone. That's, the safety is pretty much uh, the only lever you got to deal with as far as uh, right or left handed. Your magazine release is on the very bottom of the grip. So you push your push this one in rather than on the side of the uh, grip like a lot of them are. Your magazine comes out. The cotton picking thing holds 30 rounds of 22 Magnum ammo. That is, that is very cool. I like that idea. A lot less reloading to have to do. Okay. And what else we have here? We have a Picatinny rail made into the bottom of the frame also. Gives you the option of being able to mount uh, some optics or a laser or light, whatever you want to put on there. That cool. And what else we have about this thing? Um, let's go ahead and, and uh, take it apart here and show you a little bit about how to field strip it. Do some uh, some typical cleaning if you're going to own a gun like this. Uh, and then that being the case, we always open our slide, right, make sure that the chamber is empty. Okay, we're good to go there. And then to uh, take the gun apart. We're going to close it. Always put your safety on. Your magazine is, is not in the firearm. We have a takedown pin on the side of this one. We're gonna push that pin in. And with this being what it is, we may have to put a little bit of pressure on it. I'm gonna bump it with a brass punch here. So we can move our takedown pin out. There we go. Push that pin out. So we got our takedown pin. Put it over to the side so I don't Roll it off the table here. And all we have to do from that is just slide the, the uh, top of the uh, frame, the slide actually slides forward, it comes right off. Pretty cool. Okay, and with that, now to take your upper assembly field stripped apart, we're going to pull the tension off our recoil spring here. It's a little bit challenging. You have to grip the spring pretty good. Pull it forward toward the muzzle end of the barrel until you get tension off of it enough that it disengages from your locking block. Okay. Make sure you have a good grip on this thing because it takes a little bit of pressure to pull it out. Okay. There's a recoil spring and we remove our buffer. This has a buffer in the front of it, a little plastic buffer here. And when we put it in, you notice how, how it's positioned when it comes out of the gun. It does have a, a correct way and, a, and an incorrect way to put it back in. So make sure when you put it back in that you do use the uh, put it in position it so that these shoulders uh, step is designed so that it faces towards the frame of the gun that way your recoil spring the end of your recoil spring sits right here in this little pocket okay and we'll go over that again when we put it back in and with that all we do is push our our locking block forward until it hits the slot if you look in the frame we have a slot right there that the locking block will disengage from we'll pull it up here and when it gets in just the right spot, see your locking block comes up, and now your barrel comes out. That's all there is to it. Now we can uh, use our solvents to clean all the uh, the carbon, the lead powder uh, residue from our barrel and from our slide, any parts we typically would clean. One footnote about that though, being said, this is a polymer gun and it has the fiber optic tubes on it. You gotta keep in mind that these fiber optics are nothing but a plastic tube, literally. They are not sealed in this particular model gun. 
So if you use the wrong solvents, you will destroy your melt, your fiber optic, and also could damage the polymer on your frame. So make sure that when you're uh, using your solvents, you use something that is plastic safe for this kind of gun. All right. And with that, we'll run the solvents down there. We'll let them sit for five minutes or so. Um, and if you shoot the gun a lot, as with any firearm, you get a lot of buildup, possibly of uh, lead and, and copper. You may have to do a little extra scrubbing and some more aggressive solvents on the barrel, for example, to get all the uh, buildup out of that. All right, we got that done. We're gonna put a lightweight, a little light oil back into uh, the sliding surfaces, um, all the metal parts that are gonna be uh, that going to need to be lubricated and then we're going to put our barrel lock and block back in place okay, with our little notches if you look at it make sure you did that too you have a notch right here that also will mate with the notches in the bottom of the frame okay, so it only fits one way to make it work right and that being the case it also drops down back into the blocks that are milled out into the into these recesses that also coincides with the square blocks on your barrel. Alright, so it's got to be everything lined up and slide right back in place. That's all there is to it. Now we're going to put our our buffer back in place. Naturally with our larger arch fits onto your barrel and with the recessed pocket facing right, facing your grip put our recoil spring back in. The larger end of the spring here is going to fit into your buffer. All right, so put that back in right here into the buffer. And now we grab the slide and push our spring forward. All right, we'll hold the block in place, push the spring forward and it drops right down, snaps in place right into your locking block. Okay, there you go, now she's ready to put back together. All right, and now for your, for your framework, um, same thing, we're just gonna put a little bit of solvent, make sure it's plastic safe solvent on our uh, components in here and you're probably not going to have a lot of residue in here most of it's going to be in your in your upper uh, but anyway we'll clean that up put a, a very light film a couple of drops of oil and uh, wipe it off to keep a light lubricating film on the on the uh, moving components and here we're going to slip our slide back onto the frame and if you'll notice the only part that really grips on the, on the frame between the frame and the and the upper are the slots that are on our locking block. And they will have to engage right about, if I catch it right here, because there are slots in mill, made, molded into the frame. So we'll put that locking block down where it engages and slide it back and that's ready to go. Now we'll just drop our, our assembly Take down pin back in place, snap it in, and she's ready to go. And just for my own benefit, I say I'll, I'll tap it with a plastic hammer, make sure it is seated good. And here we're ready to go. Right, that's how you fill strip and do your basic cleaning on it. <clears throat> and with that, let's do a trigger pull test too for stuff since I've got it here. Um, and with any, uh, with as with any, especially with any rim fire cartridge now the book the owner's manual on this thing tells you you can dry fire it but just don't make a habit of it and personally i just prefer to put a, a dummy round into my chamber and this is a dummy round you can see right here it says 22 long rifle lr dummy round so we're going to place that in the chamber so we don't damage our firing pin right, close our slide and with that we'll take our safety off and let's see what the trigger pull feels like on this one. Because this is a, I've never seen one of these guns before actually. It's been a, a cool little deal to investigate it and been really surprised at how lightweight it is. Let's see what the trigger feels like. Oh man, that's pretty cool. That's only three and a quarter pounds. That's amazing. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I'm gonna, I'm looking forward to being able to play with one of these out to the range sometime. I hope we can do that soon maybe. And uh, See what it uh, lets you know how it shoots. But they've been very popular, very difficult to get hold of, actually. Um, so, anyway, with that, that gives you my uh, my two cents about the uh, the Caltech PMR30, a cool little 30 round 22 Magnum 
semi-automatic that I believe it will be a lot of fun. Okay. Thank you guys for, for checking out Maverick Gun Works, and if there's something we can help you with, uh, send us a comment.